Welcome to the season finale of Sports Bath. I'm Tim Peterson, and she's Lindsay Warner. We're wrapping up all of your spring sports today. We have softball, tennis, track, and lacrosse highlights. We'll also say hello to our crew that has been, made Sports Path great all year. That they have. Well, let's start with girls section softball, Stillwater and North. We're playing in the section semifinals at North High School. Stillwater enters the game as the number two seed and runners up in the Suburban East doing a little shake. Well, North won the Classic Suburban Conference and were seeded number one. In the first, North leaves the bases loaded as Rochelle Rowdy picks up a couple of strikeouts in the second inning. Stillwater, well, they get a runner in scoring position, but Carly Pickett gets Hannah Heacock swinging to end the inning. Now moving into the third, North has the bases juiced once again, and Cassie Brittleson knocks it out for the grand slam. And North is up 4-0. She's going opposite field for a two-run bomb, and the Polars take a 6-0 lead. In the fifth, it's Jamie Rebelke again. Jamie Rebelke will go, be up at plate again with another runner on base, and it's another two-run home run. She goes up two, she'll go two for three with two homers and four RBIs. Tabby Bears enters the game. She would strike out three in a row, striking out the side. And in the sixth, she'll continue throwing bullets as she adds three more strikeouts for a total of six in two innings of work. North wins this one 10 0. Tim Peterson here on location with two stars of the game and two stars for North St. Paul. It's Jamie Rubelke and Cassie Bertelson. And you both hit home runs tonight. And Rubes, you hit two. Tell us about the two home runs that you, you knocked out of the park tonight. Um, I was just trying to look for a good pitch down in the zone and hopefully get on base, and I hit him over the fence. So. And that was your first home run and second home run of the season. Were you just sit waiting all season for this moment or something? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was really exciting. But And then two in one game, that just tapped it off. So. And then you're yourself, you got a home run, but you just kind of got more runs in on the one swing of the bat. Tell us about your grand slam. Well, I followed two off that were straight down, so then I was just looking for a changeup because I knew she wouldn't throw me another one, and I just crushed it. You got, you got what you were looking for and did what you, need, you needed to do there. Next game will either be Stillwater again, who's going to be playing here shortly, or Hill Murray, and you've seen both of them teams already. Well, the Stillwater this year, you see how I'm earlier in the scrimmage and stuff. What do you know about, or does either team, are you looking forward to playing one or does it matter? Um, I don't think it really matters. They're both great teams, and we got to come out and play good. So, either way, we're friends with a lot of girls on the Hill team, so we'd like to play them. But we just saw Stillwater today, so it'd be easy to play them again since we know what they're kind of doing. North would play Stillwater in the section championship and win nine to four to take the section four three A hardware. North will play for state against Brainerd on the 9th at 11 a.m. at Caswell Park in Mankato. And let's take a look at those brackets now and show you how it all turned out, I guess. North came into the section tournament ranked number one in the section. They went through the bracket and they won. They beat White Bear Lake, Eastridge, and finally Stillwater. And Stillwater lost to North and then went and played Hill Murray and ended up back in that championship game. They would have had to beat North to move on, they didn't. North wins it, and they move on to state. Looking to be the returning, or no returning champion this year as Burnsville was knocked out as well. Well, let's take a look at the baseball section for 3A tournament. Hill Murray up there knocked out by Roseville early on. And then Stillwater and Moundsville going to the championship in Stillwater. Going to state and boys baseball. Well, Nicholas Anderson went out to the Classic Suburban Conference track meet here's some highlights from that meet. From Tartan High School, back on the 26th of May, the Classic Suburban Finals took place. Both the boys and girls teams competed in such events as the discus, shot put, long jump, pole vault, and track events. Jason Gunan from Matamidi took second in the discus. Apo Agbanu from Tartan placed second in the shot put. Joe Chickasey from North St. Paul, placed first in the long jump. Ryan Webster from Tartan took first in the pole vault. Heather Kennedy from Matamidi took first in discus. 
Courtney Lagoon from Matamita placed first in the shot put by beating Rachel Coulter of North St. Paul. Gabrielle Murphy from North St. Paul took second in the long jump. After Gary cooked up some delicious burgers and that track athletes loosened up, it was time to hit the track. Tartan held off Matamidi and North St. Paul to win the girls four by 800. Tartan led from start to finish, just beating out Matamidi. In the boys, four by eight, 100, North St. Paul took home first place honors. Beating out Matamidi with Tartan and Hill placing fourth and fifth respectively. Congratulations to all the athletes, and nice job on a season well done. White Bear Lake senior and soon-to-be graduate Sam Gunther has had an incredible year after reaching the state tournament in girls basketball. It's getting to be state time in the track season, and Sam wants to get back to state. Sam earned her way to the state meet her sophomore year in shot put. Standing in her way this year could be her younger sister, Angie. Angie edged Sam out of the state meet last year in the discus, which started a minor family feud. The sisters have worked out their differences and are helping each other so they can both go to state this year in both the discus and the shot put. Monomedi's Zephyrs have made it to state in both football and girls soccer. They are trying to get to state another time this spring. The number one ranked Monomedi boys tennis team was trying to win section 4 2A back on May 25th at White Bear Lake High School. They were matched up against St. Paul Harding in team competition. The Zephyrs beat Como and Stillwater, while Harding beat Central and Cretanerm Hall to reach the section championship. Monomedi was the top seed overall, as well as the top ranked team in the state, while Harding came into the match unranked and the number two seed. Monomedi is led by the fourth overall rated player in boys singles, Tucker Saxon. Quinn Foley, who plays number two singles for the Zephyrs, feels the team has something special this year due to the off-season training they all did together. Monomedi won the section championship 7-0 over Harding and is playing for state June 8th. Singles play will start on June 9th as well as doubles play. Josh Blister, Tucker Saxon, Quinn Foley, AJ Johnson, Ethan Heinzen. Walking on air after beating them 7 0, as opposed to last year where they gave us a bit of a run, but this year we really put them in their place. Good to back up our number one ranking in state, too, with the 7 0 victory against the number two team in the section four years in a row. There's no way that we can't play with anybody in the state right now, especially with the big win at four singles. Ryder Comfort played a bit, big match for us, and we're ready for anything at this point. Coaches run us into the ground, to be honest. Before this, uh, this last winter, before we had uh, more than half the team working out during after school, just trying to get better, and we've been doing a lot of running, so it's paid off. We got guys drilling, you know, every week, uh, twice a week at Lifetime, and you know, we're Everyone playing a lot. Everyone practices so. after practice. Yeah. Again, <laughs> so it's pretty solid. We can't keep some of the guys on our team off the court. We have to tell them to not play so that they can heal injuries and stuff like that. So yeah. it's a good problem to have. Probably just be playing for fun in college, so. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, I signed with the Gophers to play with them next year. Nice. What are you, any? I'll be I'll be playing some D3 ball down in Decorah at Luther College. Nice. I'm gonna be seeing him, University of Lacrosse, play them D3 College. <laughs> I'm gonna be playing with Josh at the U just for fun. <laughs> Going all the way. Let's go. White Bear Lake did what they have done best this year: beat Hill Murray when it counts the most. White Bear knocked the Pioneers out of the section championship in hockey and have now knocked the Pioneers out of the section playoffs in lacrosse. That landed the Bears in the section championship game against my Blaine Bengals. The Bears get on the board first as Garen David dishes one off to Ted Ramert, who gets the doorstep goal. Blaine would answer, and it's going to be Mike Cameron, who won the best hockey hair of the state tournament this year. He scores twice in a row to put Blaine up 2-1. Ted Rammert would strike again for the Bears to even the score up at 2. Blaine, they would use some nifty passing as Mac Nadal would give Blaine the lead back. 
And Michael Kershaw Maurer, who assisted on the last goal, gets one of his own here, putting the Bengals up by two. This game had many lead changes as Gavin Dennard makes it a one goal lead. Blaine would then score again to go back up by two. There's the second goal. Boom. Let's check out the precision shot taken by the Bears' Garrett David. It beats the Blaine goalie to his right hand side. Nice shot. Many more goals were scored in this game than the previous games. Or the previous game against Moundsview, where the Bears won by a score by a score just a five to four. Blaine, they would take the lead into the half, seven to six. In the third quarter, White Bear Lake strikes first as Ted Rammert nets his third to even up this game. Dalton Berg dishes one off to Mike Cameron, who nets his fourth goal of the game and puts Blaine back in front. Then it would be Joe Garrison. He evens the score up at eight, but Blaine Mac Nadal would fire one in from way out, and the Bengals are back out in front. Brady Hyder would get a power play goal for the Bears after some very nice ball movement, and the game is tied heading into the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, Hyder, he would strike again for his second goal of the game, and White Bear has finally got the lead back. You knew at this point no lead was safe as Kershaw Maurer, well, he would be going away from the net and fire the shot in off his back foot to even the score up at 10. Then with just 4.35 left in this game, Evans Billy gets the game winner and White Bear Lake is heading to state in boys lacrosse. Evan has the number six seed. Congratulations. And how hard was it leaving the team to go to your, on your trip to New Zealand? Uh, it was one of the one of the hardest things in my life. It's it's really hard to let down your team, but to come back out here and to make a difference and just help our team win, it's the best feeling in the world. And you got a goal tonight. That kind of has to really feel good for you. How, how was maybe walk us through that goal and how you got it, if you can recall it, because so much action went on here. Um, well, Garen pushed it down the side. Yeah, pass it over to the right, right to me. Uh, beat my guy inside and ripped a top cheese, and it's just, just how the chips fell. So you, you weren't able to do too much for the hockey team because of your vacation. Now you're here. What's going to be the difference for this team moving forward and in-state play? Uh, hopefully, it, well, all we need to do in-state is just play our game. If we play our game and we use our attack through our skills and our middies take the right shots, we should do all right. All right, congratulations, and you got a goal, and everything's going going a lot better right now for you. And you have a you have, you won two state section championships. Now it's time to win a state tournament, huh? That it is. All right, congratulations, good go, go get them. Thanks. Thanks. Well, we got the offense and the defense here in on location TV 19 here with Ted Rammert and his brother Jack Rammert, the goaltender here at the section four championship. And we'll start with you, Ted. He's got Ted got the uh, first goal of the game, and. Uh, well, describe what it was like to uh, at least get a, uh, the first goal of the game in a Section 4 championship. Well, that goal, I really didn't think I was going to get it, but when I got it, I was pretty pumped. You know, getting the getting wheels rolling, and just went from there. It was good. You know, you get, you get the you only got five goals in the uh, Moundsview game. What was it like? Uh, what, what was the difference between the offense in that game compared to the 11 goals you got this game? Well, I think the offense was just moving more today. They were just all over the place. We were all doing our cuts. Just We were really executing today. All right, now we'll go over to Jack now. Jack, uh, the goaltender for the White Bear Lake Bears. And, Jack, you only gave up four last game. You gave up you know, a 10 this game. I mean, what was the difference between the Moundsview offense compared to what we saw now, the, uh, the Blaine offense? Basically the same thing as what was happening with our offense. They were just moving around, cutting a lot. They were just finding those off-ball cuts, and it just made it difficult to get those on-the-crease saves. You're a senior now, so you've... Got the section championship yeah. now as a senior. I mean, describe what that's like to be able to go up and look in your fans and have they have them basically mob you. What was that like uh, as a player? Words can't even describe how happy I am right now. It was great with all the fans here. They made it that much sweeter. It was just awesome. Well, you're a senior now. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, you know, to help you, to help you got you where you are now. I'd like to thank my parents, of course, and then of course my coaches, all my players, my fans, everyone. Well, there you have it, Jack Rammer and Ted Rammert brothers and now section four champions here at Irondale High School.